Hello dear students, welcome to Devika's Commerce and Management Academy. As a part of financial accounting, I would like to start today consignment account. So consignment accounts already I have prepared videos, few videos that quality was not up to the mark initial stage of our channel. I have started that audio or video quality it's not good and I did not go in depth. So let me restart this. It is for the beginners. So who are new to this accounts for them in deep slowly I'll teach this consignment account. So let me give you the first introduction part today. What is consignment account? Before going to that you must know about a business. Suppose a merchant or an entrepreneur who wanted to increase the sales. The only option is that he has to uh, go for many branches. Main, main head office will be at somewhere manufacturing and everything but if he establishes lot of branches then he can increase the sales. But to increase the branches he needs to spend lot of money risk and it may work out or may not work out rather than that he is having another option that is send these goods on consignment basis to agents consign consignment consignment basis so consignment means it's nothing but transferring so on consignment basis he can send the goods to someone so no risk at all the agents may sell or may not sell still confused let me give you through example suppose say A is a merchant businessman entrepreneur okay so he wants to sell the goods in many places all the places he may not go so he is consulting some agents suppose say x y z so x y z are agents so he is selling the goods sending not selling he is sending the goods to x y z and x y z are going to sell the goods of a and they are going to return the money back so this process we call it as a consignment Literal meaning consign means ordering a transferring you can say. Now here A is transferring the goods to X, Y, Z. So X, Y, Z is going to act as agents. Now in our accounting language we call A as consigner. Consigner. Okay. Now agents X, Y, Z are going to call as consignee. X, Y, Z. So all these people are consignee. Now here you must remember ownership of the goods are not going to transfer. Only goods are transferred. Owner will be always consigner that is A only owner. Now here risk factor is also only with the A only. If suppose goods are destroyed or theft happened or uh, any kind of accident happened, there is a loss of the goods, any kind of risk, risk will be with A only, not to X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z are only agents. They are going to act on behalf of the A. So this is consignment. Now you must remember one more thing. What these people are going to get? Commission. On commission basis, Consignees are going to work on behalf of consigner. Are you getting this consigner, consignee? Now here suppose say for example A is sending goods of uh, say 1 lakh. 1 lakh worth of goods are sending to uh, suppose say P. A is sending goods to P 1 lakh worth. So this 1 lakh worth he is going to sell and whatever P can sell, he will sell. Rest of the goods are going to return it back to the consigner. Say he sold 70,000 worth of goods. 70,000 he sold. The rest of the 30,000 he is going to return it to A. Are you getting it? 70,000 he sold. Rest of the goods, whatever he could not sell. So that is going to return him. And 70,000 worth of goods he sold. But at what rate? That is going to decide by the consigner. Suppose say each goods cost is 10 rupees. This 1000 worth of goods at the rate of 10 rupees, its actual cost. He sold consignee to sell the goods at the rate of 15 rupees. 
suppose say at the rate of 15 rupees then he will be selling the goods at the rate of 15 rupees and whatever the amount comes 70,000 into 15 rupees that is going to return to the consigner and in return consignee, consignor is going to give commission. A commission is it is understanding between both of them. Sometimes uh, the consignor may be giving 5 percent, 10 percent whatever it may be decided in between both of them. So according to that commission is going to get by the consignee. So this is about consignment. One more important thing you have to remember. Whenever consignor is selling goods to consignee, so some advance is required to the consignor. Simply transferring 1 lakh worth of goods, so suppose say tomorrow uh, the consignee disappears, vanished, then risk is for X only, sorry A only, that is consignor. So that is why sometimes consignor may ask some advance from consignee. So that advance he can take it as a assurance so that he can rely on the consignee. So on this basis generally we will have all the transaction, consignment account is based on this only. Here you need to remember few important uh, terminology. The first terminology is that performa invoice. Performa invoice is going to prepare by the consigner. He will prepare this performa invoice and he is going to give it to the consignee. What is written in this performa invoice? Mainly description of the goods. How many goods he is sending to the consignee? Uh, quantity of the goods and the quality of the goods. When he is sending and what rate he has to sell the goods as I told you here. So how much? 10, 15 percent. At the rate 15 percent you have to sell. So that is also described in the performa invoice. Everything detailed information about the goods transferring from the consignor to consignee, it will be written in the performa invoice. In fact, performa invoice is going to work like a guidance to the consignee. Everything is written over there. Any doubts, you can just check it out. It's a return document. It's a return proof. Tomorrow, if something happens, they can just have a good understanding. They can get the clarity. So that is the reason performa invoice is compulsory document which is prepared by the consignor and it is given to consignee. And next one is that account sale. Account sale means this is going to prepare by the consignee. Consignee will prepare this account sale. This account sale is given to the consignor. What is written by the consignee? Everything related to the sales, how many goods he sold, at what rate he sold. During this consignment process, uh, what kind of expenses are occurred, all the expenses he will write and if any loss is there, uh, normal loss or abnormal loss, everything he will write and uh, also his commission, everything is written in the account sale. Suppose say 1 lakh goods as I told you, 1 lakh goods is given by consignor to consignee. So consignee sold 70,000 goods. So that he will mention in the account sale. 70,000 sold, 30,000 returning. So during this process expenses occurred say 2,000 and my commission is this much. There is a loss of so and so. Like all the details will be given in the account sale. So that consignor will have a good clarity and idea. Next after that advance and consignment. Advance and consignment also just now I told you. So whenever consignee is transferring the goods to the consignee, some advance is needed, some assurance is needed. Otherwise, there is a chance of deceiving. So there is a chance of disappearing by the consignee. So that is why always taking advance is important. So how much advance is needed that everything is deciding, going to decide by the consignor and the consignee. So that is advance on consignment. Next one is that consignee's commission. As you know that uh, consignee is going to work as agent on behalf of the consignor. So when he is going to work as an agent automatically this agent means consignee will get the commission on the sales. 70,000 goods sold, 70,000 sold on this commission say 5 percent agreed by the consignor and consignee 5 percent. 5% comes to 3,500, 3,500 commission will be given to the consignee. So here commission is here uh, three kinds of commission you can say. One is ordinary or normal commission, 
delicatory commission, overriding commission. Now, ordinary and normal commission, what is this? Ordinary and normal commission means generally 5% as I told you. On 70,000, consignor agreed to pay 5%. That is 3,500 general commission, normal commission, common commission. So, that is nor ordinary or normal commission. Second one is delicatory commission. Delicatory commission means sometimes the consignee may be selling the goods on credit basis. Whenever he is selling the goods on credit basis, automatically he needs to get some extra commission, credit basis. Whenever he is selling goods on credit basis, there is a chance of bad debts, risk factor is there. For bearing this risk factor, for selling goods on credit basis, if any bad debts comes, automatically consignee is responsible, this is the risk. For taking that risk, consignee may be given an extra commission that is delicatory commission. Say for example, 1 lakh goods is sent to the consignee. Consignee sold 70,000 goods. Out of 70,000, uh, say for example, 40,000, he sold it on credit basis. Out of 70,000, 40,000 he sold it on credit basis. Credit basis means not cash transaction. Out of this 40,000, say 10,000 is bad debts. 10,000 is bad debts. Bad debts means it's a risk, not going to get. So, for bearing this risk, extra commission will be given to the consignee. Are you getting this? Extra commission. Suppose a normal commission is uh, 5 percent and consignee says, I, I want to take risk of bad debts, I want to sell the goods on credit basis, then please give me extra commission. Say, consignee, consignor is saying that 2 percent delicatory commission I will give you. This is normal commission and delicatory commission, 2 percent extra for, for bearing the risk of bad debts. Now, total commission will be 7 percent. Are you getting this? So, that is about the delicatory commission mm -hmm. and there is another commission, overriding commission. Overriding commission means generally consignor will be saying exactly at what rate he has to sell the goods. As I told you the example like the cost is 10 rupees and he has, he said that 15 rupees you sell. You sell each and every product at the rate of 15 rupees. Suppose the consignee says that I can sell more than this also, I can sell more than 15 rupees also. Then that for selling extra amount, for selling extra rate. So, to encourage to sell the goods more than 15 rupees, consignor is going to give extra commission just to encourage to sell the goods on more than that. Especially this, is, this happens whenever new product is introduced. When you introduce new product, it is very difficult to take this product to the customer's level selling the product or introducing the product, creating interest to the customers, it is very difficult. In that cases, you whatever you can sell more than this, more than 15 percent, I will give you extra commission, more extra commission. So, that is overriding commission. Are you getting it? Normal commission is say 5 percent and delicate commission is 2 percent and also overriding commission extra means I said 15 rupees, if you can sell more than that, then overriding commission, say for example 3 percent overriding commission. So, altogether consignee is going to get 5 plus 2 plus 3 means 10 percent, he is going to get 10 percent, how in different ways, normal, delicatory and overriding commission. That is all, this is about the consignment introduction. Now, Next class, we are going to discuss about how to prepare journal entries in the books of consignor and also in consignees we will see. Consignor always prepares consignment account, consignees account, goods sent on consignment account. So, this we will see in the next class. So, hope you got a clarity about what is consignment. No doubts at all. Immediately what you do is take out your test book and read the introduction part what I have said. So, that concept, the foundation base will be strong, easy to proceed for the next, next level. 
ok stay connected there are many more subjects already I have prepared check it out in the description box and also in the playlist so that you will come to know according to your syllabus what is covered and how you can use it ok also please do share these videos with someone who is struggling to learn the subject because sharing is caring ok take care and good luck